This is Marjorie. She's a cold-blooded killer with a heart of gold. She's a half-elf barbarian with a criminal past. She's incredibly strong, very clumsy, pretty healthy, very, very stupid, but incredibly charismatic. She will slash her way out of any situation she can't talk herself out of. You've convinced them, for now. Her hobbies include goblin chucking, <laughs> humanitarian aid, pyromania, he make it. Oh, he's making it. He's making it. He made it. He made it. He made it. He made it. Enjoying scenic overlooks. Oh, wow. Look at this view. Disembowelment. Differing animals. Primitive lock picking. Bungee jumping instructor. Oh, no. Writing songs and laying down a sick beat. Voyeurism. Her mix of strength and charisma makes for a truly unique gaming experience. So let's talk about my barbarian build. Now bear in mind, I'm still on my first playthrough and I'm only up to level 5. I also have zero experience with D&D, so I may not have all the information needed or I could be wrong about a couple things. So I would like to open the comments up to tips and tricks, feedback, and constructive criticism as long as you're polite. I would say this is a very good beginner build. The Barbarian class is very simplistic, you just hit stuff, and the high charisma opens up a lot of paths in the story, so you can you can get more out of it. Now of course everybody's playstyle is going to be different. I built my character around compartmentalization and simplicity. Everybody's got a job to do. Marjorie and Carlac handle the frontline fighting since they are both barbarians. Astarian handles all my range work and all my sneaky boy stuff. Early game Shadowheart was handling all my heals, but now she's more of a close range support. And if I need any smart people stuff, she's got the wisdom and intelligence to handle all that for me. So obviously, since we're going barbarian, we want to pick the barbarian class. This gives us rage, unarmored defense, strength saving throw proficiency, constitution saving throw proficiency, simple weapon proficiency, martial weapon proficiency, light armor proficiency, medium armor proficiency, and shield proficiency. And these are I have my stats. We're very strong, pretty clumsy, somewhat healthy, incredibly stupid. As a matter of fact, I do want to chop down this wisdom a little. We'll throw that into dexterity. There we go. And incredibly charismatic with a plus two bonus to charisma and strength. And our skill proficiency is very high athletics, pretty high animal handling, pretty high perception, plus five to deception, which I think comes from being a criminal, intimidation from the barbarian, and plus three to performance and persuasion. I believe those come from charisma. We got negative one in anything that deals with dexterity and intelligence. As a matter of fact, now I remember why I had those extra points into wisdom because it affects my animal handling. And if it's not blatantly obvious, our physical appearance is based primarily off Harley Quinn and our personality is based primarily off Mar Marjorie Tyrell from Game of Thrones. Now the barbarian levels are very, very easy. For level two, all you get is a health increase, danger sense, and a reckless attack. That's it. Have fun. At level 3, this is where things get interesting. You can pick the Wild Magic, Berserker, or Wild Heart subclass. I went Wild Heart because I love talking with animals. So we get the Bestial Heart. You can change this whenever you level up or talk to Withers. I always go with the Bear because while raging, you can use Unrelenting Ferocity and have resistances to all damage except Psychic Damage. I like Damage Resist. Now, if you do pick the Bear subclass, it's going to get you these really wild piercings, which uh, they're cool, but I don't really dig it. So I'm going to go back to my Red Stenilia. At level 4, we get Health Increase and a new feat. All right, this is where I messed up big time. When I talked to Alfira, or however you pronounce her name, that bard on the outside of the grove, I did not pick up the loot. When you talk to her, make sure you pick up the loot. That way you get a musical instrument proficiency. If you don't do that and you want a musical instrument proficiency, then you have to spend a feat on it in the performer. And you're missing out on all this cool battle stuff down here. So make sure you get that free musical instrument proficiency from Alfira. Alfira is very easy to find pretty early on. Once you enter the sacred grove down here where the statue is, make sure you take a left up underneath this archway. Then take a ride up this path, she'll be up here playing the loot. The performer also gives you a plus one to charisma, and we will gladly accept that. Level five is where things start to get real, real. We get a health increase, extra attack, and fast movement. That extra attack is so, so good. Now, as far as gear, Marjorie's kind of got the thrift shop special going on. I have all my other characters except Carly geared up with like super good gear. Marjorie just kind of gets the leftovers. So, if the musical proficiency thing seems like a bit of a waste, I just want you to observe how spread out all these people are in this area. They're everywhere. If we started a fight, we'd be getting arrowed and spelled and everything from all over the place. However, we pick up the wire and just start jamming over here. Everybody's in pretty close proximity. Backs are turned. Shops are unguarded. 
Nobody really cares about this idol anymore, you know? Why not just uh, let me have this? You know, while everybody's enjoying a nice song, you know, who doesn't like a good bonfire? Well, that solves a whole bunch of issues now, doesn't it? Out of all them people, it looks like two of them survived with, like, mangled health. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the power of music. Even if you don't have fire barrels, you can just come in and start sneak attacking everybody. You get a, a huge advantage on them. And not having to fight dudes up on ledges. In my opinion, being kind of a short-range hack-and-slash guy myself, not having to chase enemies down all over the map is pretty, pretty nice. I wanted a character with very high charisma because in almost every other game I've played with charisma, you, there's always some sort of charisma check you have to pass. This can get you out of having to spend a lot of money, it can get you out of trouble with the law, you can coerce NPCs to work for you. All around having one character with incredibly high charisma to do most of the talking is very valuable. Coupled with a couple of save scrums, you can affect the storyline however you want. I like keeping my strength very high because of the throw and shove abilities. Using environmental objects to your advantage with a throw is is very useful. If you're strong enough, you can pick up enemies and throw them off cliffs. But you've always got a shove available after all your action points are used up. If you have to be on top of a bridge or on a building or next to a cliff, there's a very strong possibility if you're strong enough that you can just yeet your opponents off into the abyss. Sometimes you sacrifice loot by doing that, but if it's on top of a building or into a hole you can get into, it's pretty easy to recover the loot. Also, it does a fair amount of damage. Overall, I think the Barbarian build is very effective, opens up a lot of interesting and entertaining gameplay options, is pretty easy to master, and is pretty strong if you use it tactically enough. Make sure you guys check out my Baldur's Gate Let's Play, and if you enjoyed this video and want to see more like it, make sure you Sparta kick that subscribe button. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed. Let's get this over with.